There was something incredibly joyful about imagining a story with a setting, with characters, with an ultimate meaning, and trying to bring it together in, in you know, little sentences lined up. It was just something really pleasurable about that, sort of like being a small god. Life of Pi is award-winning author Jan Martel's best-known literary work, for which he won the prestigious Man Booker Prize. This is WatchMojo.com. I'm your host, Leila. Today I get the chance to talk to this writer about delighting readers and what it all comes down to. You started writing full-time at 27. Was that a decision you made or did that come about naturally? It sort of came about organically. I I didn't really choose writing. I think writing chose me. Um, Everything else fell away, you know, from anthropology to zoology, and I was sort of left with writing. And when I started, I wasn't very good, and bit by bit I got better. So I didn't know what I was doing, in a sense. I wasn't thinking, I'll do this to comment on that. I was just doing it. How did you sort of contend with your own uncertainty about where you were going? We're taught to be very reasonable in the West. We value that. Reasonable people make a lot of money. Reasonable people can make, you know... A lot, get a lot of power. And I just was fed up of being so reasonable. I thought, what's the point of being so reasonable? Where does it get me? And thank God I ended up in India at the end of this process. And that's where I started doing Life of Pi, which in a sense is a, is a book that says, stop making sense. Have a, you know, have a vertical view of life rather than a horizontal one. Don't have just a material, chemical one. Uh, don't worry if it's not true. You know, you don't have to be certain about anything in life. It's, you know, life is the process. It's not the knowledge. So just entertain transcendence and you'll be better for it. So in a sense, it's a totally unreasonable proposition, and I think uh, I'm the better for it, and I think generally, in a way, people are the better for it for being less reasonable. Can you talk to us a bit about the balance between the composition, the delivery of the story, and the story you're telling itself? Well, you have to do the writing, and then you tinker, but I love tinkering. Just to see it improve makes you feel better. Even simple things like language, you have to write in English. You know, Let's say you're writing an English novel, it has to be in reasonable English. You know, You can't just throw in you know, Albanian in it if you want, because they won't understand it. So there's normal compromises of trying to communicate. In the other sense, I write literary stuff, and there's no real compromises, because by and large, in our Western capitalist, profit-driven society, art is irrelevant. When you think about all the people to who it's ir- irrelevant, and that it's not really irrelevant to them? No, no, it isn't. I think that the writer ultimately is a free element. You know, you, you, you're not responsible to anyone. Art is witness. You know, the, the, the genuine artist just says, this is life. Not the good parts or the bad parts, just this is life, including, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. And it's that act of witness that makes art so necessary and so true. Both art and religion, essentially at their core, there are stories. And I think we are story animals. So I think the work of a lifetime is to figure out what your story is, what story you're going to tell of yourself, of your family, of your city, of your country, and then ultimately of your universe. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. My pleasure.